Hi, welcome to today's video. We're diving deep into the complex world of international relations and foreign policy. Specifically, we'll explore a critical question. Should the United States continue to provide aid to both Ukraine and Israel? These two nations hold key positions on the global stage, and their relationship with the United States has far-reaching implications. We'll be discussing the history, significance, and controversy surrounding USA to Ukraine and Israel, as well as the implications for national security and international alliances. Later on, I'll also give my personal thoughts on the matter. Let's get into it. USA to Ukraine and Israel is relevant because it touches upon matters of global significance, including geopolitics, national security, democratic values, international alliances, and foreign policy. These discussions shape the United States' role in the world and have far-reaching implications on regional stability and security. Let's outline past USA to Ukraine, USA to Israel, arguments for, arguments against, impacts on diplomacy, and future implications. Following the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the U.S. has consistently provided aid to Ukraine. U.S.-Ukraine relations gained significant attention during the Euro-Maiden protests, which led to the ousting of the pro-Russian Ukrainian president. Then in 2014, Russia annexed Crimea, leading to a crisis in eastern Ukraine. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia in response and increased aid to Ukraine. In 2022, just days after Russia invaded Ukraine, USAID increased significantly. As of 2023, the United States has provided an estimated $46.7 billion in aid to Ukraine. The money and training that the U.S. has provided has bolstered the Ukrainian military's ability to halt the Russian advance, hampering Russian aggression and its ability to assert dominance over its neighbors. The aid has also sustained Ukraine's war economy. In 1948, Israel declared its independence, and the United States was one of the first countries to recognize the newly established Jewish state. During the 1950s and 60s, the U.S.-Israel relationship continued to strengthen. With the significant economic and military aid provided by the United States, the 1970s saw a significant shift in U.S.-Israel relationship with the launch of the Middle East peace process. The 1978 Camp David Accords, brokered by President Jimmy Carter, led to a peace treaty between Israel and Egypt in 1979. The 2000s brought challenges, including the Second Intifada, or the Palestinian Uprising, and continued violence in the region. The U.S.-Israeli relationship remained strong, but it also faced occasional diplomatic tensions, particularly regarding issues like Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Since its founding in 1948, the U.S. has given approximately $148 billion to Israel. The U.S.-Israel relationship is characterized by shared democratic values, military cooperation, and common interest in promoting stability and security in the Middle East. It has weathered numerous challenges and conflicts over the decades and remains a crucial element of U.S. foreign policy in the region. U.S. aid to Israel has had a significant impact bolstering Israel's defensive capabilities, enhancing regional stability, and strengthening the U.S.-Israel alliance, while also contributing to Israel's security and regional stability. Providing aid to Ukraine and Israel is a critical component of the United States' national security strategy. In the case of Ukraine, supporting its defensive capabilities helps to deter Russian aggression and promote stability in Eastern Europe. A strong and secure Ukraine contributes to regional security, reducing the risk of conflicts that could spill over into Western Europe and draw in the United States. Additionally, fostering stability in Ukraine supports democratic values and reinforces America's commitment to democratic principles. In the case of Israel, continued aid bolsters the security of a key ally in a tumultuous Middle East. Israel's military strength is crucial for maintaining stability in the region, and U.S. support reinforces the U.S.-Israel strategic partnership, which in turn serves as a stabilizing factor amidst regional conflicts. 
Furthermore, supporting Israel aligns with the broader U.S. policy of promoting democratic values and maintaining a stable, secure Middle East, which is in the best interest of U.S. national security. Critics argue that providing military aid to Ukraine might inadvertently escalate the conflict with Russia. The fear is that arming Ukraine could lead to further tension and potentially draw the United States into direct military confrontation with Russia. Opponents of aid to Ukraine suggest that the United States should prioritize domestic needs over providing foreign aid. They argue that the funds allocated to Ukraine could be better used for domestic purposes, infrastructure, or other national priorities. Some critics view U.S. aid to Ukraine through a broader lens of skepticism regarding U.S. foreign policy. They may question the U.S.'s consistency in supporting democratic values and argue that American involvement in foreign conflicts may not always yield the desired outcomes. Providing aid to Ukraine could potentially strain diplomatic relations with Russia. Detractors may argue that maintaining a working relationship with Russia is essential for broader international issues and that U.S. aid to Ukraine complicates these diplomatic efforts. Critics argue that providing military aid to Israel perpetuates the Israeli-Palestinian conflict by maintaining a significant power imbalance. They contend that it discourages peace negotiations and a two-state solution. Some believe that the U.S. should reallocate the substantial aid to Israel for domestic needs or for other international priorities. They argue that the aid disproportionately benefits a relatively affluent country. Critics may also point to concerns about Israel's human rights records, particularly in the relations to the Palestinian territories. They argue that U.S. aid should be contingent on improved human rights practices. Other critics argue that providing military aid to Israel reduces the United States' leverage to influence Israeli policies or to encourage actions that promote peace in the region. They claim that withholding aid could be a more effective diplomatic tool. Congress plays a pivotal role in the allocation of aid to both Ukraine and Israel. Through its legislative authority, Congress approves and appropriates funds for foreign assistance programs. The process involves congressional committees and subcommittees overseeing foreign relations and appropriations, where lawmakers deliberate, scrutinize, and shape the foreign aid budget. Congressional support for aid to Ukraine and Israel reflects broader bipartisan consensus, which often results in the consistent allocation of funds. Additionally, Congress may pass legislation that outlines the terms and conditions of the aid influencing how it is used and ensuring it aligns with the U.S. foreign policy objectives. In this way, Congress serves as a critical check and balance in the distribution of foreign aid and shapes the United States' commitments to these two nations. For Ukraine, public opinion often hinges on perceptions of Russia's actions and the desire to support a democratic nation resisting aggression. Regarding Israel, opinions can be shaped by views on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, concerns about human rights, and the broader strategic importance of the U.S.-Israel alliance. Public opinion can vary widely based on the individual's political affiliations, international outlook, and their understanding of the complex geopolitical and historical context surrounding U.S. aid to these nations. In conclusion, the discussions surrounding U.S. aid to Ukraine and Israel are complex, but they underscore the United States' commitment to supporting key allies, maintaining regional stability, and upholding democratic values on the global stage. These policy decisions have far-reaching implications for the security, stability, and alliances that the United States values. I believe we should help both countries. I don't want to see our young men and women have to go off and fight another war. But if things do get bad enough, I think they might have to. There's a saying I think holds true. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. I don't think it takes hundreds of billions of dollars. I think we should spend less abroad and put most of that money back into problems like our southern border and like the opioid crisis, just to name a few. The U.S. has been the world police for decades, but our culture is changing. I know you won't see it on social media, but because of the U.S. strategic dominance the last 80 years, the world has become more prosperous and safer overall.
Thank you for joining us in this in-depth discussion about USAID, Ukraine, and Israel. These decisions shape international relations and security in their regions. We encourage you to stay informed, engage in the discussion, and share your thoughts on this vital topic. Your perspective matters, and your voice can contribute to the ongoing dialogue on U.S. foreign policy. So please, like this video, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content, and don't forget to leave your comments below. Together, let's continue exploring the complexities of international affairs and their impact on the world. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.